Today's video is sponsored by the lovely people over at AOA.com. If you're looking for a couple million runes, a shiny new weapon, or some fancy equipment, AOA has got you covered. Better yet, use code EXPLOITS when you check out for 3% off your order. There are plenty of builds out there in Elden Ring. Some of them overpowered, some of them, well, useless. But no other build can come close to how much damage you get using this one. Just be sure to get every item in this list, as each item works in harmony with the other, and they all begin stacking, making you more powerful with each swing. So firstly, let's talk stats. These are my stats, obviously you don't need to copy them completely, but it's worth putting as much as you can into Arcane and Vigor, with Mind and Dex being a secondary thought. Everything else is up to you. For this build, you're going to want the Scavenger's Curved Sword. This is actually an incredibly simple weapon to find. It isn't hidden behind a boss or a ridiculous labyrinth of a dungeon. It's just outside, sitting on a dead body. And you can find it right here. You're going to need two of these. There are a few ways to do this. If you're in New Game Plus, it's likely that you would have picked one up in your travels before. So you'll simply need to head over and grab it again. If not, we have a video on duplicating weapons and runes. I'll link it in the description. And we have a Discord filled with hundreds of Elden Ring players looking to duplicate, trade, and fight bosses together, so definitely get some help in there. Now that you've got your curved swords, let's talk Ash of War and Infinities. So the curved sword already does bleed damage, which is great. The high arcane we talked about earlier is going to help give that a little boost too. So for Ashes of War, I put Bloodhound Step on my right and Seppuku on my left. A lot of people would argue Seppuku should be on both, but I like to zip around using this build, especially when fighting the bigger enemies. You will thank me later when you do this. For affinities, you're going to want to choose a cult for both weapons. This means that your swords will now scale with arcane. That high level arcane is really going to come in handy. For your head, you'll want to use the white mask. This boosts damage when blood loss is in the vicinity. This boosts your damage by 10%. To get the white mask, you'll need to do Vera's quest line and be rewarded with the Pure Blood Knight's medal. Use it to teleport and fight the three invaders in the blood pool. I got the full armor set from the second invader. For the chest, you'll want the Raptor's Black Feather Armor. This enhances jump attacks, which is exactly what we'll be doing. This boosts damage by 15%. You can get the Raptor's Black Feather Armor here. We actually have a video that goes into more detail on where to find it. I will also link that in the description. For your hands and feet, choose anything that offers a nice chunk of damage negation without causing you to fat roll. I went with Malekith's Armor here. All of these talismans are useful and contribute towards insane amounts of damage, so don't skip any of these. Firstly, we have the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. This, like the White Mask, boosts damage when blood loss is around. This gives us an extra 20% damage. With the White Mask, this gives you a total of 30% boosted damage when there's blood loss in the vicinity, which, FYI, will be the whole time. You can get the Lord of Blood's Exaltation here. Secondly, we've got the Claw Talisman. This gives you a 12% boost to jump attacks, which means in total you'll be receiving a 27% bonus every time you jump attack, which FYI again, will be the whole time. You can find the talisman here, we also have a video that goes into more detail, I'll leave it in the description. The Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, which greatly raises attack power with successive attacks, which guess what, it's going to be the whole time. The attack boost will start at 6%, but keep climbing to a whopping 22% attack boost with each hit. To get this talisman, you'll need to get to the end of Millicent's questline and help her defeat her sisters. And finally, you'll want Millicent's prosthesis, which boosts dex by 5 and increases attack power with successive attacks. The attack boost starts at 4% and eventually goes up to 11 with each hit. To get this talisman, people seem to think that you need to get to the end of Millicent's questline and kill her, but you can actually get it earlier by killing her at the Windmill Heights Site of Grace after killing the Godskin Apostle. The green burst crystal tier is incredibly important to use here. It boosts stamina recovery speed, which will help out a lot considering we're going to be jumping and swinging our swords around. The second tier is incredibly important. It ties all of this together beautifully. All of the other equipment you'll be wearing gives just under a 100% boost to your damage. You'll also be using Seppuku on top of this. And remember that your weapons are set to the occult affinity, which, if you set your stats right, will already mean crazy damage for your dual swords. 
Well, this tier, the Thorny Crack tier, makes consecutive attacks grow stronger the longer they continue. Meaning each time you hit the enemy, the damage increases on top of the 100% damage boost from everything else. I'm pretty sure there are more intricate and impressive ways that these items are stacking together, but I don't have a calculator to hand and you don't care. So let's just say big damage. So how does this build work? Well, before you walk into the boss room, get seppuku done, drink your flask of wondrous physic, head in and just start jumping at the boss and hitting L1 for PlayStation and LB for Xbox. This hits the boss with an attack that strikes them four times, which triggers everything you're wearing related to successive attacks. The seppuku and the natural blood loss of the curved swords will trigger everything you're wearing that boosts attack power when blood loss is in the vicinity. Your high level arcane will boost that as well as the sword's initial damage due to the occult affinity. And then the jump you're doing before the attack is triggering everything you're wearing that boosts jump attacks. With each jump strike, you'll do more and more damage and it should only take a few hits to take down your enemy. And as a very helpful tip to all the viewers that have stuck with me, use the Mimic Tier Summon with this build. The fact the summon has all of this equipment as well doubles the rate in which you kill the bosses. Not only are they a great distraction for letting you get in those extra hits, but they are great at keeping the blood loss going for your attack buffs. Enjoy the build and have fun.